Welcome back to Social Media for Your Business Online. I'm Victor Campos. So after setting up our account, now it's time to start using it. So Twitter, just like every other social network, has a way to share. So very generically, we can say we can share on Twitter, we can share on Facebook, etc. On Twitter, we're going to tweet. Anything that we post to Twitter is a tweet. Again, thinking in terms about how does social media help your business, we should always think in terms about what should I post, what should I tweet, what should I share that will get a reaction. And we have various reactions that we can get from Twitter or any social network. Before I start to tweet, let me browse on my home screen the tweets of various accounts that I followed. So I've followed Bon Appetit. I see, please let us remain friends after this bad pun. Please let us remain friends. Okay, I get it now. Ha ha ha. And, um, and then it's a picture of romaine lettuce. Okay, great. Then there's Alton Brown. He posted a photo there. Hashtag Alton Brown Live. Food and wine. Tesco is selling mold wine scented toilet paper just in time for Christmas. Okay. Then we see what else. Food and wine. 26 mouthwatering Christmas appetizers. So these are the various accounts that I've followed, and I'm seeing their content. The point of then following an account is for inspiration. I could shoot a photo like this. It's not extremely special. You might say, I don't have the right kind of camera. I don't have the right kind of plate. All of that is inconsequential. It's the content of the photo. The visuals are important, of course. But look at this. You can create a photo like this. This is 12 little dishes with ingredients, with dips and, and such. You can do that. Put some good light, take a photo, and you've got something to share. And the result of this particular post, at the bottom here of every tweet, you will see some statistics. A little heart for likes, these spinning arrows for retweets, and a back arrow for replies. Every tweet on Twitter can have these three interactions. The like denotes, in this case, that 61 people liked this post, this tweet. They wrote, is this love? And then a nice photo with a link attached. 61 people liked it enough to click the heart. Now it's 62. That's one interaction I can get from Twitter. Browsing more, 33 holiday cocktail party recipes. This has the icon here of a retweet. That means 15 people on Twitter liked this post so much that they shared it to more people. A retweet is like a copy and paste. This tweet originally came from Food & Wine, but I may choose to click that retweet button It'll then ask me to either retweet it as is or add a comment. And again, I'll get to this detail a little bit later. But basically, I liked this tweet so much, I want my followers to see it as well. At the moment, I have zero followers. On the flip side, what if I tweet something so great that my followers, let's say one of my seven followers, sees my photo and clicks the retweet. But wait a minute, that person had 700 followers. So I reached 707 people, the original seven that were following me, and that one person that retweeted me to their 700 more. So I've reached more people. That's the point of these interactions, to reach people. Going further, sometimes you might see, well, I never followed, I never remember following Chris Valdez, but I see Alton Brown retweeted. Chris Valdez, sports enthusiast journalist turned public relations officer. He has 106 followers. So 106 people are paying attention to him on Twitter. But wait a minute, he just had Alton Brown retweet his tweet, and Alton Brown has 3.43 million followers. Suddenly... 
Chris got a larger audience because of Alton. You want that for your business. You want to post something so that more people see it. Here's the NYT Theater. They have 117,000 followers. You want to post something for more people to see. And if you get one of these big names to, f to like your tweets, to retweet your tweets, or to reply to your tweets, that's going to help you build exposure. The reason that these have activity is because they are content that people like, that people enjoy, that people respond to. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Yes, we're singing to this croissant loaf. So Bon Appetit tweeted a photo of a slice of bread. I can do that. The bread looks amazing. I, I don't think I can make that bread, but I can shoot that photo. The result is 98 likes, 26 retweets. And depending on the view, you may see how many number of replies or not. But you can click on the time of the tweet to get more details, and if there are replies, the replies will appear there. We'll see why replies are valuable later. All right, so my idea is get inspired by the photos and content. Sometimes there's videos of the accounts that you're following to take a photo. This is a nice looking photo, but I could make that photo. You could make that photo. Just think about how it's shot Look at how it's not even properly centered. The edge of the plate to the left is cut off. The right edge of the plate is not. So it's not quite centered. The background, it's, I don't know, a shabby chic kind of background. I don't quite like that, but a lot of people do. The plate and the utensils and such are nice and clean and modern, but the background is shabby. I don't know, I think that's a contrast that I don't quite like, but I'm not even focused on that. I'm focused on this beautiful dessert that will impress your guests. 91 people liked it, even better, 29 people retweeted it. So these do have a value, and I would assign a value in the order from right to left. Likes are good, retweets are better, replies are best. A like is that I click like and move on. What's next? I like that, like, what's next? What's next? Oh, I really like that. Let me retweet it. That takes more effort. It's at a higher level, a higher value. Then the highest level is that someone liked something so much that they commented. So if I click on the time of a tweet, this tweet from 10 hours ago, I'm seeing 213 likes, 22 retweets, and I'm seeing comments. Look at that, lots of comments. People are interacting. They like this photo of this sandwich, which honestly is not that special. A lot of people liked it. Yes, it also comes from the account that has 3 million, nearly 3.5 million followers. But that's why you want to build followers, to build interaction. Right now, here, Alton Brown shares this photo. It's a great photo, but he's also got a link attached. It's his recipe for a turkey salad sandwich. If I click that, it'll take me over to altonbrown.com, his turkey salad recipe. Again, traffic back to his website to accomplish whatever the purpose of his website. Maybe he's selling a book. Maybe he's selling recipes. Maybe he's doing guest speaking gigs. Whatever the purpose of his website is, traffic. The more people that he has that are followers, the more possibility of achieving the goals that he set out to. There's no way to tell for us, usually, how many clicks have been made to someone else's link. We can tell, however, how many clicks have been made for our links when we talk about the section of analytics. That'll be later. We're still strategizing about what we're going to share on Twitter. So get inspired by what other accounts are sharing. That's why you would want to follow some accounts. If you no longer want it to follow an account, you can always click on the Twitter profile and you should see a button that says you're following. You don't want to follow, so unfollow. It's also a good idea to go off to other accounts um, profile screen so you can see how they set up their 
design. They have their logo, Food and Wine. They have a really nice graphic in the back there to catch your attention. I can go to View Profile, Following, and see a list of all the accounts that I'm following. So I get a preview here. Notice the ones that stand out have filled in the profile completely. Bobby Flay, he's too busy in the kitchen to set up his profile completely. He doesn't have a graphic up there. See if I click there, no graphic at the top. Amateur move. But Jamie Oliver, I can see background photo, his picture as well. It doesn't have to be a company icon. It can be a person. But if I go click on his account, then I see a nice big picture here. Order now. Superfood Family Classics. Hashtag Family Superfood. So he's selling a book. Superfood Family Classics. He's got a link on his bio right here where I can go buy his book. So get inspired also by the accounts that you're following to see how they have their profiles set up and what they're tweeting. Okay, back to what we're tweeting. From any screen that you're at, you should have the ability at the top right corner to tweet. Let's say I'm back on the home screen. I always have the tweet button at the top right or the what's happening button. Same thing. So let's say I simply click on the box. I get a box here. What's happening? And I have free reign to write whatever I want, I want here up to 140 characters. Notice the counter counting down. Eventually, I'm going to run out of space and I can no longer tweet. The tweet button has become inactive. So 140 characters. And we used to think when Twitter debuted a decade ago that 140 characters was not enough space at all to get a point to get across whatever my point is. Again, get inspiration by the accounts you're following to see you can get across a lot. Because not only can you write 140 characters of text, you can also attach a picture or a video, an animated graphic, a poll, a location. And if you've got the mobile app, you can actually do live video. Okay, for my very first tweet, I'm going to say, hello, I'm on Twitter. If you were doing this for an assignment, that would earn you a nice F+. You tweeted, but it's a worthless tweet. And the reason I'm being so harsh is you're not thinking in terms about, or I wasn't thinking in terms about, what am I doing to benefit my business? That biography that you write, that picture that you post to your avatar, the tweets that you will post on a regular basis, once a week at least, you're not thinking in terms about how is this beneficial to my business. My business is Victor's Bakery. I want to sell cupcakes. So you might think, okay, great, what I need to do is um, chocolate chip cupcake on sale now. And then I add a link, victorsbakery.com sale slash chocolate chip cupcake cake.html. That assumes I've got a page on my website where I can then direct people to buy that cupcake. Well, this will earn you a D, maybe a D plus if I was generous. Because if this was your first tweet, you don't want to start off with your salesman pitches right away. You want to build followers. You want to build a community. Once you've got followers, then you start tweeting about sales, and then people will possibly respond. If you start off from the beginning about sale, 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 buy this, donate now, give me money, that's going to turn people off. Why would they subscribe to, why would they follow an account that's just about sales? Okay, let's try again. Thinking in terms about what benefits me. I'm trying to get followers. I'm trying to get sales. So I'm going to try something like this. Hello, everyone. We just debuted on Twitter. Follow us for tasty treats and exclusive content. This is answering the question, why? Why would someone follow you? Why would someone like your tweet? 
Why would someone retweet you? Why would someone reply to you? So here we're answering, what, why, why would they follow me? Follow my account, my business? Because we're going to have exclusive content. Let's make it more obvious. Exclusive coupons. I'm going to have coupons here. If you follow me, you can get a coupon for a tasty treat. Well, saying it's a tasty treat doesn't quite sell people. Something visual might sell people. So if I had a photo of a tasty treat that I could attach to my tweet, that might help me sell it better. Again, think in terms about why would someone care? So I'm going to say something nice and positive. Positivity breeds positivity. So if you're positive on a social network, most likely you'll get positive results. I have some visual content here of a nice looking flan. And because I activated add a description, I have the ability to write to describe this photo for the visually impaired. I would want everyone to be able to see this photo, everyone to be able to buy this flan. So I'm going to describe it. Our tasty flan ships through the US. Get a slice before we run out. Now it seems that in this description you don't have a limit of what you can write here, but I would not abuse this. Think in terms about, well, it looks like there is a limit down here. Think in terms about writing a description of one sentence that describes what the picture is. So for, the, for some people, they will never see this, they won't care. But for some people that are blind, for example, this will be read to them when they come across your tweet and you are reaching out to people that perhaps haven't been accommodated as well as before and that could earn you the loyalty of your effort and you get a new follower. Better yet, you get a new sale. So I'm going to attach that description. This tweet would earn me a better grade. An A grade, probably. Because I've written something positive, I have a reason for my tweet, I have a graphic, I added a description. The cool thing with Twitter is that I can add more photos. I can add three more. I can have a little album of four images if I wanted. But notice I cannot further add the other kinds of items once I started to add an item. I have the ability also to tag who's in this photo. So if I start typing Alton Brown, Alton Brown is tagged in this photo. Again, this, is, this could be abused don't do this. You don't quite want to tag people unless they're really involved with the photo. That could be spammy. I could be annoying Alton Brown and he may go to the button that says block user. And now I've blocked. Now I've been blocked from seeing any of his content. But this is a better tweet. So I'll go ahead and tweet that out to the universe. And now everyone on Twitter and all of my followers can see this. All of my zero followers are all of the 330 million people on Twitter who don't know I exist. So we always have this conundrum when we start off. Should I tweet? Should I post to Facebook? Should I upload videos on YouTube when I don't have followers, therefore I'm talking to myself? Or... Should I try to build followers first to have someone that can see my content? When American Express tweets, there's a lot of people paying attention. There are 890,000 people paying attention to American Express on Twitter. Me, I've got zero. Zero followers. No one paying attention. So the conundrum is, do I talk to myself first or do I build followers? I'm going to recommend talk to yourself first. That is, post content first and then try to build followers. Because if a person were to visit my account right now, 
twitter.com slash victorsbakery11, they would see one tweet. Um, I don't have much of an incentive then to click follow. So if I'm looking at some other account, you will see that there's a follow button. If someone visits your account and you don't have very much to show for it, why would they follow you? Don't assume that because of your fame of being a 50-year-old restaurant in the heart of San Diego and having commercials on TV that that will translate to success in social media. It's going to be all about your content. What do you have for me now? That mentality is what is going to drive a lot of people to follow you. So I've made one tweet. My recommendation for you to start off with is to have at least five tweets of a variety of content and topics related to your business before you start to try to build followers. So let's do a few more. The reason for that is then you have something to entice people to follow you. So yes, you're going to talk to yourself. Five tweets, seven tweets, whatever. You're going to have some content first before trying to build followers. You could tweet all those five tweets at once right now, rapid fire, sure. You could tweet one today, one tomorrow, one the next day, three the next day. That's fine. But I'm going to tell you, I really recommend at least five tweets as a variety of content to entice people to follow you. I'm going to tweet one more thing. Okay. I've done a picture. I can do a video. So if I had a video, I can also upload the video. We have a GIF an animated graphic. If you click here, you're going to see a variety of graphics related to various fun topics. So let's say, today I'm creating this video on a Sunday. So I'm going to say, ready for Monday. Adding in a graphic that's sort of like, uh, hmm, let's go with an ew kind of graphic. You have all of these kinds of pictures built in. Let's go with just a generic ew kind of face. So this graphic will be attached to my tweet. Okay, well, that's funny, but what's the point? The funny factor of this may be enough to elicit reactions, which are likes, retweets, replies, or follows. But what's in it for the business? Ready for Monday? Never fear. Our goodie bag will last you till next weekend with a link to buy the goodie bag. So on my website, I've got a goodie bag ready to sell. It's got various cupcakes and other treats that will last me. So as I start to build followers, They'll see something funny that catches attention. The graphic is always going to catch people's attention first before the text, even though the text is first visible. So if I've caught their attention with this funny expression, and then they read, oh, okay, yeah, Monday, I don't like Monday, it's a goodie bag, let me check that out. They may click the link, check out the goodie bag, and maybe buy the goodie bag. Well, with 10 followers, Maybe one will buy the goodie bag. With 100 followers, maybe a few more. With 1,000 followers, a few more. With 10,000 followers, a few more. So the more followers I get, the more possibility that I have of a result. I didn't put anything like buy now on my first tweet. I did on my second tweet. But I'm not going to do the hard sell every single time then it gets tiring for your followers. Again, browsing the tweets of the accounts that you're following, hopefully you'll see that not all of them are about the hard sell. I'm not following Lucky Peach magazine, but if I click to browse to see what they're tweeting, they have their banner graphic, their avatar, a little bit about them. I wouldn't know what they were about at all without it showing that they're a food magazine. Link back to their site. They've been on Twitter since 2011. 
these followers that I am following also follow Lucky Peach. They've posted 7,000 photos and videos so far. They've posted 10,000 tweets so far. They have 115,000 followers. So on the 27th, they wrote, Announcing our Los Angeles issue. Subscribe and receive it when it drops on November 15th. Okay, so there's a salesmanship tweet right there. That's fine. It got some reactions. Three hours ago, this wintry salad is equal parts beautiful and healthy. Well, if I'm interested, I can click and, and view there. This is probably a recipe to make it myself. They're not selling it to me. It's a recipe. They retweeted the all. They wrote, why does an Aperol spritz cost so much more than in Shanghai than it does in London? Here's an article about a beverage. Have you ever tried the cult soda known as Moxie? They're probably not selling Moxie. They're just, they just have an article on their website about that classic soda. And what is this? Stay tuned. Subscribe on an email. Or read another article. Or click on an ad. Or whatever is the goal of their website. Here they tweeted, This flatbread from at Mad Krapala is the fluffy, sturdy, multi-purpose bread of your dreams. Photo, not that of an amazing photo. Link, and then a mention of another Twitter account. Mad Capra, Mad Capra LA, seems to be a restaurant. 227 followers. But here, they're getting free publicity from an account with 115,000 followers. So that inspired me to tweet. So I'll say something like, want to party like it's 1999 with at Alton. As I start typing Alton Brown, his Twitter account shows up. If you're trying to connect with relatively big names, make sure that this little blue check mark is next to their name because there's impersonators on Twitter. Alton Brown. Want to party like it's 1999 with Alton Brown? Remember, butter is better. Now here, this is a completely non sequitur type of tweet, but as an example of including another Twitter user. Alton Brown will get a notification, depending on how his settings are set, and that may alert him that my business exists. He then goes to my profile and sees, okay, there's food-related stuff here, the account is filled in, it's interesting, maybe I'll like this tweet. Maybe I'll retweet this tweet. Maybe I'll reply to this tweet. Or better yet, maybe I'll follow Victor's Bakery. That's actually the fourth level of interaction. We have like, retweet, reply, and follow. Someone likes your content so much that they've chosen to follow you and always keep up to date with it. I don't have a picture to go along with it, but I could add a poll maybe. I can add various choices here. Butter is better. Butter is not better. Third choice, I prefer tallow. Now you're going to need to decide on the voice of your business on social media. Are you going to be funny, stoic, informational, detached, friendly, etc. That's something that I cannot teach. I can teach you how Twitter works and what's effective, but you still have to figure out how are you going to use your Twitter, your Facebook, your YouTube in your own voice. Humor often works well. Again, positivity breeds positivity. If you can make someone laugh or chortle or LOL, they may respond. They may like a tweet, retweet a tweet, 
reply to a tweet, or follow you. Once they've followed you, you've got a captive audience. Then subsequent tweets may result in more action, such as buying what you're selling. This poll will have three questions. I want it to run for some amount of time. One day is fine, and I'll tweet. My tweet was posted. Alton Brown got a notification, and if he has a moment, he might have seen my tweet. Worst case scenario, nothing happens. Best case scenario, he replies, he retweets, he follows. If I don't have a lot of content to work with, why would he follow? If I don't have interesting things, why would he follow? If I don't have nice pictures, why would he retweet? That's a good goal to try to reach such a big name. But usually for most of us, we're going to be reaching smaller people. And that's just fine. On the next video that we'll talk about, we'll focus on more strategies to get followers. For the moment, get inspiration from the accounts that you're following about what to tweet. Get in the practice of tweeting often. It's no big thing to tweet once a day, three times a day. There's no rules here, but think in terms about building followers, keeping followers, and then maybe selling things or whatever the purpose of your online presence is. Let's say I'm simply an artist. I'm not trying to sell my paintings, but I want people to see my paintings. I'm going to get on Twitter and share my process of making my paintings, maybe a little corner of a picture, maybe the whole picture, maybe a video of me finishing, putting the finishing touches on a video, whatever. I just want people to see my, my paintings, and I'm not really selling them. But as I build more followers, I currently have zero, I can get to the result that I'm looking for. So in our next video, we'll talk about building followers. This has been Victor Campos.